Hello, and welcome to podcast number four of the Your OKC Property Manager podcast. Today's episode is titled Renting Out Your Property. I'm here with Scott Nagitello, broker and owner of OKC Home Realty Services, LLC, one of the top property management companies in the Oklahoma City metro area. Today's episode, we will be discussing renting out your property. We're going to cover advertising, showings, and tenant screening. To start off, Scott, what's so special about renting out your property? Why is it so important to get this right? Well, um, thank you for a very nice introduction. And if you don't get this part right, putting a good tenant in the property, it's hard to get any of it right because from the go, you're you're putting yourself in a really bad position. And uh, so the the who you put into the property is very important. And uh, that's so we're in for today uh, kind of the ins and outs of that. And um, the other thing is right now, you know, at least in Oklahoma City market, the uh, the rental market has slowed down a little bit. And so it's really important to, um, to put a good face on any of the advertisements that you put out. Um, and the presentation of that property is, uh, is very important because that will cause a, um, someone, a, a prospective tenant to either, you know, want to go further with that and possibly apply for the property or get a showing. So it's really important how, uh, how you present the, uh, the advertising. Great. So we'll go right into advertising, what are the most effective online platforms for advertising your rental property? Well, the, uh, I guess the gorilla in the room is Zillow. They, uh, they get a lot of traffic and a lot of people who are interested in buying or renting uh, a prop, a house or an apartment. And so, um, it's super, it's super important that you have your listing posted on that website. And, um, they actually one of the, uh, few websites that charges you to, to, uh, to post there, but still it's, you're probably putting yourself at a disadvantage, not having, not having the property posted. There. Um, but there are some other places that you want to, want to have property and that's, uh, Facebook, um, you need to have your 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 property advertised there. Um, you know, another one is uh, depending upon if you know, if, you, if you have a section eight property and you want to go that way, it's important that your uh, you put your properties on affordable housing. In Oklahoma, it's not it's not required that you that you open your property. For or Section Eight, so most people don't want to uh, don't want to go that route. And, but but there are some cases where you know depending upon the the neighborhood where the property is located or the the owner of the property, you might want to uh, you might want to put that property on uh, on on affordable housing to try to get a Section Eight property. Now there are a bunch of other websites that I'm not going to going to going to mention by name um and, and you know for instance um, on when we have a property we put them on about um it's about 15 or 20 websites they always keep adding more uh, there's more platforms that uh that add, it seems like all the time um, and and one that we uh it used to be a a fairly good place to to post rental we used to post on Craigslist, but you uh, tend to get more uh, more scammers on Craigslist, and so have, uh, we've avoided putting properties on that website for that reason. So, are traditional advertising methods like signs and maybe the local newspaper classifieds are are those still useful? Signs are definitely useful, and uh, we will put a put a sign front of a property unless, uh, unless there's a good reason not to, you know, there are some neighborhoods where you don't want to really advertise 
that the property is vacant. Uh, and if the neighborhood's kind of sketchy, then we usually won't put a put a sign up just because we don't want any uh, we don't want to have uh, mischief. In terms of newspapers, um, that that used to be a really effective way to advertise rental properties years ago, um, but we we don't use newspapers anymore. Just because so much of the uh, so much of of the people really uh, trying to find a, a place to rent, they they know where to go online to find a to find a place. Makes sense. Are there any other ways? We have our that we put our our rentals on that gets visitors um, on a daily basis. So we always. Post our uh, post our our, uh, our vacancies there as uh, as as well. When it comes to posting your listing, how do you highlight the key features of your property so that it does stand out? Really, the most important part of the document are the photos and the video for the the unit. Um, the text is I mean the text is important. It's important to give a good, you know, a, a couple of good key features of the property and point out things that may not be obvious just from looking at the at the photographs. But uh, you really need to like get good photographs of the property. And in, um, I don't see um, a lot a lot of other companies and like individuals put their uh, put the video. With the uh, with the listing, and uh, that's that's a really important part because you can look at photos, but you can't you can't get a, a real feel for the layout of the house and, and things like that. So so that uh, that that video allows people to envision in their mind how the how the house is laid out, and that's still not as good as a uh, Actual showing and walking through the property and just you know seeing with your own eyes in person, but it's the next best thing to doing that. So when you're posting listings online, what happens when someone is interested in one of your properties? We have an app that that will schedule showings because I mean what we want to have happen is one or two things: either they're going to put an app put in an application right away just because they're so excited they're so excited about the uh about the property and they, and they and they don't want to let that slip away or they want to get a showing set up that's the third most would be if they if they just want to, to request additional information about it um, but the the uh, app that we have allow them to go ahead and schedule uh, showings if we have property open for showings there there's some cases in which we um we don't have uh, the properties open for showings because uh, it, it could be that um it could be that the, the tenant in the property hasn't moved out yet um so and just uh just to make it clear on that um, a good a really good policy or procedure for um when you, when your tenant gives notice is that um, is to post that listing uh, right away as soon as you find out that the tenant's moving out, and th the reason to do that is it just puts the property longer on the market, and it, it allows people who um, who are making plans to to find a you know find their next place. They they see that that's going to be available, let's say on the first, and um, and you know that instead of waiting to post that property until after the tenant moves out and everything, um, the advantage is that it, that that app that we have um, allows the uh, allows the tenant to, um, to put themselves on a waiting list to get a notification of when that property. Uh, is open for showings, and 
they they can immediately as soon as they get that notification go ahead and schedule their their viewing because some of them are probably not going to uh, make a decision about a for the property until they've actually had a showing. Another thing to point about that app is that it uh, it does give automatic notifications to the to the prospective tenant to about the showing that they're up. Like, like let's say for instance that they have a, a showing scheduled for Monday at three o'clock and it would it would send them you know the day before uh, a reminder about the showing and then a few hours before that uh, also send a, a, a notification about that showing and then once they have completed the showing um, it asks them to provide uh, some feedback and then, you know, that kind of gives us a feel for what uh, what they thought about the property and what they what they liked what they didn't like and also it, um, it it's a reminder for them to go ahead and put in an application if 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 they liked the property okay what does a typical showing look like and are there different types of showings yeah there are um, some companies will put a lockbox on the property and they will uh, they'll have the uh, the tenant go to the property and show the property to themselves um, another and and we don't typically go that route um, we have uh, made a decision that we prefer to have in person showings um, a lot of our owners aren't comfortable with uh, with um, tenants just you know getting us giving out the combination to strangers and having them walk through the property. Um, they prefer to have one of our uh, one of our leasing agents to meet them at the property to to do the showing, and that way, you know, that way the um, showing uh, the showing agent is can answer questions about the property and let them know about how our particular you know rental and property management system works and what they you know what they can expect and usually people have you know they have a number of questions about how you know how things work and how can they pay the rent and like how long you know what's what the terms of the lease and all these things the showing agent can uh, can explain when they meet that person there at the property <clears throat> um, and so again, we uh, we may do a lockbox showing uh, on some properties, but only if it's a special request from the owner, or um, if they're my rental properties, and I decide that uh, that I want to to do that. But but even with my properties, I almost always do the in-person showing just because it's so. Much I feel like it's so much more effective to have a real person meet them at the property. <laughs> what about the people who are out of state? Do you also do virtual tours? Yes, we do. We, uh, we have our showing agent contact that person and um, walk through the property and just do a virtual tour with them. So, yeah, we also provide that option. Yes. Okay. How should you prepare your property to make a really good first impression at the showings? So the properties need to be clean and presentable. I mean, I don't know. It's just, um, we don't, I, I don't really want to open the property for showings until, until it looks like it's more or less moving red. I mean, there may be a few last minute detail that we can, you know, that we can um, set aside and, and just promise that they'll be, that they'll be finished up. But, uh, you know, if the property is a, is messy, um, <clears throat> it doesn't make a, for a good impression with the person who's going to look at it. And so we, I really don't like, uh, I really don't like doing it that way. Moving on to, Tenant screening. 
why is tenant screening so important? Yeah, so again, this is where you you vet the tenants, and so it's uh, you know it's super important to look at all the details, um, <clears throat> to look at things like pay stubs. We always require um, that the in for the income verification that they provide pay stubs, and you'd be surprised how many how many times. Uh, people will will make, like they'll make up their own fake pay stubs and try to get that to uh, try to get that to pass. Um, check we check in with with their employer just to make sure that they actually are working where they say that they work. Um, and uh, we check court records, pull their credit, um, and we. Uh, uh, and get a, a, a rental verification, rental verification from the, their current and or their their past uh, landlords, just to check their, you know, just to check their track record for uh, for paying rent. Sometimes you have to take those with a grain of salt because sometimes landlords are just trying to get rid of a, a bad tenant, and they'll say that they're that they're the best tenant in the world. So, you know, you have to kind of take into account the whole picture and not just one thing. Are there any legal implications for improper tenant screening? Yeah, uh, according to the fair housing laws, uh, you've got to, you've got to have uh criteria in place for your screening so that you're so that you're treating every all the applicants the same and um, that so that means like you have to have a certain amount of required income like for instance we require that the take-home pay of the uh, the applicant needs to be at least three times what the rent is that's an example um, we uh, and you know, so we have we have certain criteria for like how many years it they have to have been eviction free and um, uh, and, and things like that. So that um, if there is a complaint about uh, possible discrimination, that we can uh, we can point to you know point to our criteria and just you know we can show that. We were following our own rules, and we weren't just singling someone out, you know, because of the, for, for whatever reason. So that keeps us out of trouble as a company and our owners as well. So you all also pull credit. What do you look for in credit checks? Yeah, so there's a couple of things. One is that we will never approve anyone with the credit score of uh, of less than 500 unless there's just something really extraordinary going on that would um, explain that uh, or maybe they paid an entire year of rent in advance. It's something extraordinary going on. Um, <clears throat> we look We look for it more to uh, for instance, to verify their identity, to make sure that this is actually the person who is applying and not, not someone who's pretending to be someone else. Um, it it's also shows a track record for how they pay the bills. Um, and it can, it can also show uh, sometimes there are, um, there are things on there from other property management companies that do credit reporting so that there can be either positive or negative credit reports from, uh, from, from that. So those are the kinds of things that we, uh, we look for on the credit report other than just their credit score. What red flags should you be looking for in court records? Well, I had mentioned evictions. So 
we uh, we look to see if we, like, that they've ever been evicted from a property. Yeah, but it doesn't necessarily rule them out as a as an applicant because those have, there may have been an eviction from ten or fifteen years ago that's in no way reflective of the person's ability to uh, to pay rent currently. Um, so you do have to take those kinds of things into consideration. Um, if, if a person was evicted, you know, like let's say a year ago, um, according to a cr our criteria, we uh, probably not, I mean, we're not going to uh, allow in because uh, a person would need to be eviction free for at least two years according to our to our criteria for that. Um, there are also you know other things like uh, crim criminal activity. So um, and and again, if there's some criminal activity on a on a on court records, it doesn't necessarily mean that tenant is going to be uh, their their application is going to be denied you know if there was a felony from you know four or five years ago that's already been settled and the person has uh, has not had issues since then you know that's probably not going to prevent them from uh from being approved for uh one of our rental properties and, and it's not just one thing that we're looking at it's you know it's, it's Many things all taken together in consideration. So, Scott, how might a property management company save you time when it comes to renting out your property? <clears throat> yeah, so there there are some people out there who are who have figured out that they have better things to do than. Um, try to manage their own rental properties. There are some people that do a great job with that. Uh, <clears throat> if you're someone who has moved out of the state, let's say, uh, or you have you're very busy with your current job and you just don't have time to mess with this, uh, there there are some things to consider about how this property management company can save you a great deal of time. And one of them is with with renting out the property, you know, because we uh, we do this as a career and as as our business, and so um, we do this seven days a week, and we don't have concerns about you know we since we have staff who do showings on weekends, you know it it um, we we have this you know we have a, a way of getting the thing that done. Um, that would, you know, allow you to not have to take away from uh, from your family time on the weekend to to you know to go and do things. Um, and you know, we have certain systems that are set in place. Um, you know, like I mentioned, this software that we have, you know, it it's it's absolutely wonderful at organizing and you know. Following up with uh, following up with uh, applicants and things like that, um, and you know, rental doing uh, property management may seem like kind of a trivial thing, but there are a lot of laws and uh, <clears throat> requirements to keep up with if you want to do this the right way, and you don't want to you know possibly get into a bind. Um, and you know, since we know all those things, uh, we, you know, we, we have that, we cover that base for you. And so you don't have to do all the research to figure, you know, to figure things out, figure out how to operate legally. What are some ways a property management company could help you with advertising a rental house that people might not think of? Well, that's, yeah, that's a, a good one there. Um, one that the answer that occurs to me is uh, <clears throat> is a listing a property for rent on the MLS. You know, this is where people normally think of 
you know, you list when you have a property for for sale, you you realtor will list it on the MLS, but we we also list uh, rental properties there, and this gets other uh, agents possibly involved in helping the property management company to to locate uh, to locate tenants, and so um, uh, it's especially if a property is, uh, is kind of a difficult one. And, um, you know, it's not like it's been up for a while and it's not getting a lot of response at all to not put the property on the MS. How can a property management company handle the scheduling and logistics of the showings? Oh, yeah, that kind of goes back to that uh, software that I was talking about, that, that app to does a wonderful job in scheduling the logistic, you know, scheduling showings and and doing reminders for the uh, for the um, the people that are to show the property and build, building a, a waiting list of people who are uh, who want to see the property. How could a property management company keep an owner out of legal trouble when it comes to renting out their property? Uh, yeah, so. There are, like I said, there are a lot of um, aspects of the fair housing law people may not, not realize. And um, an example that I would give is uh, emotional support animals. Some owners say, you know, they want they want no pets in their property because they have the impression that pets can cause damage, and um, you know. It, possible that that can definitely happen. However, the, um, the fair housing laws have made exceptions for emotional support animals, uh, which are, um, you know, for instance, if someone has a, a, a disability because of um, uh, anxiety or something like that, uh, and that person can get a, uh, it can get a from a physician about that condition that would allow that person to have an emotional support animal. Um, and as long as the uh, the letter is done in such a way that it in compliance with the fair housing laws, that owner must allow the tenant to have that emotional support animal and not pay any kind of uh, pet fees for that animal. And um, if the, uh, you know, if the owner refuses to allow the emotional support animal in, in the property, which I've seen some of our owners who have wanted to, uh, wanted to take that approach, and we've had to have a conversation with them um, to, to make sure that to make sure that we're um, doing doing that properly, um, and so that's that's one way where um, the an owner may just not be aware of the law about uh, about what what can what they can do and and not do um, about having you know about something that the, that the tenant wants to do. There's a lot of other ways to to I mean, if you don't have a uh, a set in stone uh, policy for uh, how how you can deny implications. That's another you know that's another possible problem. Um, and if you're not you know if you're not keeping the information uh, so that you know if there is a complaint later on. That you will have the have the documentation at hand. I mean, it's another it's another issue, and these are all things that um, that management companies can do to ensure that an owner stays in compliance with with those uh, fair housing laws. What are the most important things to remember about advertising, showings, and tenant screenings that you want people to take away and remember from this? Probably just uh, on in terms of 
when you're when you're when the, you're renting out the property to keep in mind that this is probably one of the most important part of property management and you should not be rushing to put a person to or to put a person or a family into a property that you know that will come back later to haunt you and so um, you get really you need to do this part right it, and it needs to be done in a way that's legal that, and, and you're not you're not discriminating in some, uh, some form or another. And maybe the last thing is that a uh, property management company can be, you know, very helpful to uh, help an owner na navigate these waters. Well, thank you, Scott. It's really informative about getting your rental property rented out. If people are considering getting help from a professional property management company, how could they reach out to you? Well, I would say the maybe the best thing to do is yeah, to go on our website, uh, and our website is yourokcpropertymanager.com, and request a uh, request an appointment time. And uh, that, that is if you have a property that's located in, in our service area in the Oklahoma City metro area, and uh, I or my professionals will be glad to, uh, to set up a, you know, or have a, have a conversation with you um, to go over all those details.